gardening in warm climates means that we have an abundance of sunshine, which is a wonderful thing. But it also means that we have to find ways to deal with that abundance of sunshine during the hottest months of the year. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about shade, why it's important to provide shade for plants during the hottest months of the year, what ways to provide shade, and we'll even get into some of the details about which plants need shade, which plants don't, what percentages of shade cloth to use for different plants. After watching today's video, you'll know what to do to provide shade for the plants that need it during the hottest months of the year. If we haven't met before, my name's Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. It is definitely a blessing to be able to garden year-round here in the low desert, and an abundance of sunshine makes that possible. But sometimes there can be too much of a good thing. Anyone who has followed the full sun directions meant for other climates may not have realized that full sun doesn't always mean full Arizona sun. Luckily, most most times of the year, that same sun is quite an asset, and cool loving crops benefit from abundant sunshine. But during those summer months, many plants do benefit from afternoon shade. That afternoon sun during the hottest months of the year causes a lot of problems and is really stressful for plants. Add into that reflected heat from block walls and asphalt and things really heat up to unbearable temperatures for humans as well as plants. There are really three reasons why we want to provide some afternoon shade. The first reason is that morning sun often provides all the energy needed for photosynthesis. Providing shade can also lower the moisture lost during transpiration. Plants breathe through transpiration. They take up water through their roots and then they breathe that water out through their leaves. But when it's that hot, they can't breathe fast enough to keep up with that moisture loss. And that's when you see those really sad, wilted plants in the heat of the afternoon sun. The third reason is most vegetables are pretty stressed once temperatures get over 100 degrees. Many landscape plants and trees and shrubs and even plants in your vegetable garden will go into a summer dormancy and focus on staying alive. Shade keeps direct sun off of the foliage and the shaded area can be about 10 degrees cooler than areas without shade. When we're talking about adding shade to your garden, there's more to it than just throwing a shade cloth up over your entire garden. One of the most important things you can do is to be very thoughtful about where you're planting and what you're planting within your garden. Notice which areas of your yard receive morning sun and afternoon shade naturally. That is prime real estate in your garden. Those are the best spots to have things growing during the summer. Use those spots in your garden for vegetables that need afternoon shade. South or west facing areas of your yard will probably heat up the most. Choose plants that can tolerate that kind of heat if you're going to plant them there without adding extra shade. Containers are a great way to add space to your garden and luckily containers are movable. During the hottest months of the year, position your containers so that they are in an area that receives more morning sun and afternoon shade. It's a great idea to have a basic understanding of your property and the directions that it faces and which areas get more or less sunlight. The east side is going to be sunny in the morning and then shaded in the afternoon. The west side of your property is often shaded in the morning, but then it will get full hot afternoon sun. The south side can get hot but is usually shaded in the late summer afternoon. The north side of your property is usually shaded almost all the time during winter when the sun is low, and it's usually the coldest place during a winter freeze. Learning and understanding the different areas in your property will help you make more informed decisions when it's time to plant so that you can plant the right plant in the right place. Now we're gonna talk about the different groups of plants. There are several plants that definitely need afternoon shade 
during the hottest months of the year. Some of those plants include strawberries, blackberries, eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, Swiss chard, squash, pumpkins, artichokes. Other plants aren't often thought of as warm season plants, but providing shade for those plants can often extend their growing season just a little bit. Carrots, cucumbers, beans, beets, lettuce, peas, kale, potatoes, radishes, spinach, and cilantro. Those are plants that don't like it too hot and often when it gets hot they'll be done, but providing a little bit of shade at the beginning of that hot season will help them produce a little bit longer. And when we talk about adding shade, we don't want to shade those plants during the cooler months of the year. Those plants need plenty of sun. It's just when temperatures are high and providing a little bit of extra shade cools them just enough to help them have a harvest. So now let's talk about some of the tough plants that can take full Arizona sun. Some of those plants include corn, loofah, sunflowers, grapes, melons, black-eyed peas, asparagus beans, Armenian cucumbers, and peanuts. There are many ways that we can provide shade during the hottest months of the year. One way to provide shade is to plant trees along the western edge of your property. Those plants will grow up and shade that afternoon western sun. Another way to provide the shade that is needed by your plants is intentionally plant heat-loving plants on the west or southwestern side of plants that need some shade. You can have a wall of okra, have a sunflower wall, grow plants that love sun over a trellis, use that vining plant to provide shade. Examples of this would be hyacinth vine, Armenian cucumbers, or other vining vegetables like loofah that can climb that trellis and take the full sun. So now let's talk about shade cloth. Adding shade cloth to your garden is an easy way to add temporary shade during the hottest months of the year. So when you think about adding shade cloth, it's important not to just drape the shade cloth over the plant. You don't want the shade cloth actually touching the plant. So you need to have some kind of a structure in place or build some kind of a structure to hold the shade cloth over the plants. So a two to three foot clearance above the shade cloth is best to allow adequate airflow below the shade cloth. Don't think of completely encasing your garden in shade, but think of adding shade to protect the garden during the hottest times of day. So you may often have a shade cloth on the western edge of your garden or have that shade cloth hang down to block that late afternoon sun. You can attach shade cloth to existing trellises. Tea posts are a great way to add shade. Add shade cloth to hoop houses. A favorite way to attach for me is using zip ties and it's easy to remove that at the end of the season, fold it back up and then reuse the shade cloth next season. Get creative and find ways to add that shade cloth to shade the hottest parts of your garden. So shade cloth comes in different coverages. The percentage that's mentioned is going to be the amount of sunlight that it shades. For example, a 30% shade cloth is going to allow 70% of the sunlight to filter through. So for most vegetables, 40% is adequate shade. If you're shading tomatoes, you may want to use 50% shade. If you're growing mixed plantings, 50% is a pretty safe bet. If you're growing really light sensitive plants like succulents, you may want to up that to a 60 or 70% shade cloth. The shade cloth comes in different colors. Dark shade cloth will attract the heat more and it will heat up more, so you want that to be further away from your plants. If you have a light colored shade cloth, it can be closer to your plant. So if your shade structure is such that you don't have a lot of room above your plants, then you may want to add a lighter color shade rather than a darker color shade. Pay attention to the sun placement in your garden and put that shade cloth where it can be most effective in blocking that late afternoon sun. As temperatures begin to cool down in the fall, be sure to remove that shade cloth. Again, the key word with the shade cloth is temporary. You don't want to leave it up during the coolest months of the year. Don't be afraid of the sun. Abundant sunshine is the reason we can garden year round here in the low desert of Arizona. Learn to manage 
sunlight effectively in your garden and use it to your advantage. Hopefully this video has given you a few ideas to do just that. Thank you so much for watching.